So what are the planning and design solutions to provide for climate adaptation in cities? Professor Tapper and colleagues at Monash University and the Cooperative Research Centre for Water Sensitive Cities have been working on these questions. If we can identify uh, adaptation approaches, for example, water sensitive urban design that can cool the environment, uh, this will actually save a lot of lives. Let's have a look at those factors that impact on heat health outcomes or uh, the risk of bad uh, health outcomes from heat. So we have exposure on the one hand. Uh, things like uh, the regional climate, the, the weather patterns of the day and so on, all add to exposure. But so do things like the urban form and the urban heat island. And those are of course impacted by the distribution of water, vegetation and so on. So we can actually reduce exposure by cha making changes to the way we build our cities. We can adapt uh, as a, a population and that can also affect the heat health outcomes. The other element of course is vulnerability and some areas uh, of cities are more vulnerable than others. Areas of the city where we have older folk, uh, where people have pre-existing medical conditions, where people are poorer and so socially isolated. All of these areas make for human health vulnerability. So if we can address the issues of exposure, particularly to those areas that are highly vulnerable, we can actually dramatically improve heat health outcomes. And that's one of the reasons why we are exploring the potential of water sensitive urban design to increase evapotranspiration that allows cooling of the surface uh, and reducing atmospheric heating as we talked about previously, to reduce daytime heat storage, to increase shading and to support vegetation health. And if we do all of these things with water sensitive urban design and green infrastructure, then we can mitigate urban heat and improve thermal comfort. And the diagram on the right just shows some of the well-known approaches to water-sensitive urban design. Things like bioswales, green walls, green roofs, uh, tree canopies and so on. All of these things can be used to modify our urban climate. These are some images of uh, temperatures across the city. And the main image there basically is a, an aerial image of central Melbourne on a hot day. The green areas are those areas that are relatively cool and irrigated and tree canopies and so on. And the, the yellows and, and richer browns and, and reddish colours, they are showing the hot areas. So you can really see the distinction between warm, uh, unsealed, sorry, warm sealed environments and uh, green vegetated environments. And if you look to the two right-hand diagrams, you can also see, for example, in the top one, the benefits of uh, a green wall, uh, areas of that wall that are not uh, uh, covered uh, in, in creeper are much hotter than the others. And in the lower diagram, we can see the effect of a tree that is actually quite hot on its outside surfaces because it's no longer transpiring in this particular case, but it is providing dramatic shading at the surface and you can see that cooling. You would have heard um, Ian Shears talking about Errol Street Pocket Park. Well, this is a, uh, an example of the difference in surface temperature across a water sensitive urban design installation in this pocket park. And we did this using a drone and a thermal camera. And what we can see here is that as we move uh, from uh, top to bottom across this part of the park, we move from uh, a cool uh, tree canopy to a relatively cool uh, area of water sensitive urban design, that uh, area in the middle. But we do that by flying above a, uh, a very warm pavement uh, and a very warm road surface. So the temperature differentiation across this little bit of landscape is as much as uh, almost 20 degrees centigrade. And that is then reflected in the air temperatures above. 
We find that these uh, water sensitive urban design features that provide cooling at the surface can also influence the lowest part of the atmosphere. This example from a uh, central urban park in Melbourne on a very hot day in late summer uh, where the temperature was close to uh, 37 degrees centigrade, almost 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. We flew a drone with a temperature sensor on the upwind side and on the downwind side of the park. And we found that, that uh, as you can see from the little diagram, that there was about a five degree cooling on the downwind side of the park. So these features, water sensitive urban design features can have a dramatic impact on both surface and low level air temperatures. We also know that trees dramatically improve human thermal comfort. And this is uh, some more work that was done in the central city uh, in, in Melbourne. A and it shows that uh, if we consider different parts of the urban landscape, whether we're looking at under trees, under tree canopies, out in the open, uh, in the shade of buildings and so on, or in partial shade, all of these things contribute dramatically to thermal comfort. So this, this plot over a period of two days under fairly hot conditions shows that uh, what we call physiological equivalent temperature that is a bit like the temperature that people feel can differ by as much as 20 degrees centigrade depending on whether you are under the shade of a tree or out in the open. And these differences are obviously quite critical in terms of determining uh, your thermal comfort and ultimately can impact on, on health. We know that uh, green infrastructure and water sensitive urban design should be strategically designed and placed to deliver cooling benefits. We know that distributing this infrastructure across the landscape rather than concentrating in one area uh, is much better because uh, the cooling benefits are distributed across the city rather than localised. We know, for example, that trees should be placed in areas of really high solar exposure. Uh, and it's really important that we maximise the benefits of existing green infrastructure by providing water uh, to those plants. So the strategic placement of trees and water sensitive urban design features should be to minimise daytime sun exposure of surfaces, uh, to allow cooling and ventilation at night, we don't want to trap air at night. So periodic areas of irrigated green open space uh, amongst the trees is, is a really good thing to do. Uh, trees with high canopy density and a high leaf area are much better than open canopies and small leaf areas to maximise shading effects. We've done some work to show that implementation of water sensitive urban design should prioritise areas of high population vulnerability, high heat exposure and high levels of activity. So we've developed uh, this approach using effectively these three rings that overlap. So if we can identify the hot areas, we can do that by remote sensing or measurement. We can identify the vulnerable uh, areas of neighbourhoods uh, from census data or from, from household uh, surveys and so on. And we, if we can also identify those areas of great public activity, it's the areas where these three things intersect that we should prioritise for green infrastructure and water sensitive urban design. So the key message here is that a water sensitive city will save lives in extreme heat and will improve thermal comfort and livability overall.